I've been telling you with the values that we've done thus far, don't worry about sig figs, we haven't talked about it. Don't worry about sig figs, we haven't talked about it yet. Well, now, starting today, throughout the rest of the year in chemistry, we need to worry about sig figs, okay? Significant digits. What are they? Why do we have them? Now, those of you that took IPS with Mr. Scott have been introduced to this stuff, all right? You've been introduced to sig figs. Those of you that didn't take IPS, this is the first time, okay? So, we need to understand sig figs. We need to make sure that our measurements, our numerical values all have significant figures in consideration. So, first of all, let's get some background. The numbers reported in a measurement are limited by the measuring tool. We've seen that when we make estimates, right? On the skills review worksheet, remember we had the graduated cylinder it had the meniscus, we measured the meniscus, we knew it was this value, we knew it was this value, and the very last digit we estimated, correct? That is what that is saying right there. Depending on what your tool is, depends on what and where the estimate, the digit that is estimated is. A 100 graduated cylinder, 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, has increments of one. A 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, I look at it and in between its increments, it's got 0 0.5. Its increments are 0 0.5. So that's gonna be a different estimation of that last value. I look at a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. It has increments of 0.2, okay? It has increments of 0.2. So based on your measuring tool, it's going to change that digit that is estimated. <coughs> Excuse me. Significant figures in a measurement include the known digits plus one estimated digit. One estimated digit. We have rules that we follow on significant figures. Here is the very first rule. Rule number one states that all non-zero digits in a measured number are significant. Only a zero could indicate that rounding occurred. So I look and I say all non-zero digits. 38.15 has four digits. None of them are zeros, so they are all non-zeros so that is four significant figures. 5.6, one, two. How many on 65.6? Three. How many on 122.55? Five, okay? So that's a pretty easy rule number one, okay? If you have non-zero digits, they are all significant. Our second rule is that leading zeros in a decimal number are not significant. Now, what are leading zeros? Notice that as I underline these, those three zeros, those are leading zeros. Now, if there would be a one right here, would those be leading zeros? No, because they're not leading. There's a non-zero digit in front of it. So leading zeros are the zeros 
that are in front of the number. I've underlined these in all of the examples. Those are the leading zeros. Leading zeros are not significant. They are placeholders. So, for these particular ones, right here is the only significant figure, the 8. And this one, 1, 5, 6 are all three significant, so that's three sig figs. The 42 and the 262, so we have two sig figs there and three sig figs there. So leading zeros are not significant. Our third significant figure rule is dealing with sandwiched zeros. Zeros between non-zero numbers are significant. They cannot be rounded unless they are on the end of a number. So any sandwich zero is significant. So as I see here, 50.8 has three significant figures. 2001 has four. 0 .702 has three significant digits and 0 .000405 has three significant digits. Remember, remember that these zeros right here, those are leading zeros. Do leading zeros count? No, they do not. But this zero does count right here. That does because he is a sandwich zero. Zeros that are sandwich are significant. Whoa, that was kind of cool. Leading zeros, however, are not significant. Trailing zeros in numbers without decimals are not significant. They are only placeholders. So does it matter whether there is a decimal involved or not? Absolutely. Okay, on the first one here, I see 25,000. There is no decimal place, no decimal point there. So those three zeros are placeholders. I see a decimal point right here. So that tells me that the zeros involved with 200 are significant. No decimal here, so those two zeros are not significant. So how many sig figs do I have there? Three. And finally, here's 25,005,000. We've got a couple of different things here. Because we've got trailing zeros, which are not significant because there's no decimal. We've got sandwich zeros. Are sandwich zeros significant? Absolutely. So, how many sig figs do I have here? Five of them. Five significant digits right there. Now, let me uh, state something else real quick before I move on. Let's say I have this number right here, 25,000. How would I signify if I needed to have four significant digits? How could I do that? Could I just put a decimal point right here and say, yeah, that's four sig figs? Why can't I? I just changed that number from 25,000 to 2,500, didn't I? So I cannot do that. 
So what do I need to do? Okay. I could put it into scientific notation. Doing so, I have four sig figs, I said. Well, here's my decimal. One, two, three, four. 2.500, because I have four sig figs, times 10 to the fourth, right? I could do that. Also, what I could do is I could use a bar. I could put a bar right here. By putting a bar over that zero, that tells me that that zero is significant. So in this particular one, those four numbers would be significant right there. So I could use a bar to indicate that that zero was significant, if need be. What you'll do on WebAssign, folks, what you'll probably do on WebAssign, because you can't put a bar on WebAssign, you'll probably just put it into scientific notation. Now, we've got a couple of learning checks here on this next one, okay? A couple of learning checks. Which answer contains three significant figures? Okay. Which contains three sig figs? What about number one? Let me ask you this. On number one, is this zero right here significant? Is that zero significant? Have we dealt with a question like this? I don't think we had a rule on this one yet, did we? If we have zeros that are following a decimal, they are significant. Okay? So, here's a leading zero. It is not. You might think that that's a trailing zero, but that decimal makes it not trailing. So that is four sig figs. Here are three leading zeros. Are they significant? No. So how many sig figs do I have here? Three. What about this one? Is that zero significant? No, there's no decimal behind it, is there? So if the answer was letter A, which answers contain three sig figs? Two and three both do. All zeros are significant in... Is letter, letter, is number one, are all those zeros significant? No, these leading ones are not. These leading ones are not significant. So this would be one. Is that one significant? Yeah, it's sandwiched. Two, three. Three sig figs here. What about this one? Okay, those appear to be trailing, but that's a decimal. So the ones after a decimal are significant. So how many sig figs do I have here? Five of them. What about here? How many sig figs there? Four. This zero is significant because it's following a decimal. It is significant because it's following a decimal. Now, let me explain this. If, let me ask you this. What if I would change this one right here to 25,000? Wait, wait. 25,300. Does the comma mean the same thing the decimal does? No. So how many sig figs do I have here? Three. Three sig figs there. So the decimal means different than what the comma does. That answer your question? Letter C. 5,300, excuse me, 534,675 rounded to three significant figures. Is one correct? No, I've really changed that number. Is two correct? Yes. Are these zeros just placeholders? Yes. Is three correct? Yes, that's the same number. Just put into scientific notation. In which set or sets do both numbers contain the same number of significant figures? What about one? No. What about two? No. What about three? 
Yes. Okay. How many sig figs in 22.0? Three sig figs. How many sig figs here? Four. Four. How many here? Four. Four. How many here? One. Here. Two. Here. Two. Are we okay with this so far? Give me a thumbs up. Let me see. Are we okay? Do we understand this question right here? Good. Good. Good thumbs up. Now, state the number of sig figs in each of the following. Each of the following. How many in A? Two. How many in B? How many in C? D? And in E? Now, if you have questions on any one of those, ask them now. Okay? Ask them now. All right, that is the last slide I have. On Monday, we are going to talk about significant numbers in calculations, okay? So we will continue our sig fig talk on Monday.